there's this little girl, and she sees her mom preparing the Christmas ham. And her mom takes a big knife, and she cuts the ham in half, and she puts it in the big, in the big pan, puts it in the oven. And she says, Mom, why do you cut the ham in half? She says, well, I'll be honest with you, honey, I don't really know. Your grandma always used to do that. So she walks downstairs and she says, Grandma, why did you always cut the ham in half? She goes, you know what's funny you should mention? <laughs> I'm not really sure. Go ask your great grandma. She's down to Grammy's, oh, and she's watching TV, and she's kind of got a little dribble going on her. Walker sitting next to this thing, and she's on the chair that with the feet come up, you know. And she says, Grandma, why did she always cut the ham in half? And she says, huh? She says, well, Grandma, why, why, when you cook the ham, you always cut it in half? She goes, oh, we had a small oven. <laughs> How many things in life are we just stop processing? Right? We stop evolving our thought about things because we're lazy or we're scared to be the one that does something new and different. But we know that there's lots of us, and many times we've all played this role, but there's lots of us that make it a life habit. I'm going to have some guts. I'm going to do what I believe is the right thing when I feel the inspiration, and I'm not going to worry about what other people say about me being different. Right? Years ago, we used to jump out of airplanes, and, you know, we always jump on the belly. You fall belly first, we call it the, the frog, the modified frog. And <clears throat> I didn't like the idea of being stuck in one thing. This is a big sky. I should be able to do whatever I want, like Tinkerbell. And so I would go up and do all kinds of crazy flips. And this is back in the days with the old military parachutes and the belly mount reserves. And I came down from this jump. I said, it was the weirdest thing. I kind of brought my knees up to do a backflip, but I didn't throw the backflip very hard, so I kind of got stuck. And then I just pushed my feet down and I was standing there. I was just standing up. And everybody's laughing. They're going, no, you didn't. I said, no, I'm telling you. It was like for like 4,000 feet. I was just standing there in free fall. It was the coolest thing ever. Like they, nobody believed me. And it has become now a sport. <laughs> we call free flying. You know, and I didn't invent it. It was other people way before me back in the 60s. They'd go up and try crazy stuff too, but nobody believed them either. <laughs> and now, 60 to 70% of the people on an airplane, when you look around at most drop zones, are doing this stuff. They're sit flying and they're head down flying, all this crazy stuff. It's one I competed in the X Games about. So, you know, these limitations that we pose, superimpose over an unlimited reality, I mean, if you really ponder, what is it about? Is, is it really about me not wanting to try something new? I mean, do you hate novelty that much? You know, is the human race adverse to novelty, really? Is it sort of an evolutionary thing? Oh, we don't try new things. That's why babies don't like spicy food, and they don't like to try new things, because evolutionarily, oh, it's dangerous, and so they don't eat bad berries, right? Maybe. But maybe, it's through bad experiences. Maybe the, these, these little things add up and we draw a conclusion from our negative mood right after a thump, right? Right after a bad experience where we simply, you know, we did something we regret. And then we draw a conclusion and we are firm from a place of negative mood. Negative about ourselves, negative about the world, and we say, I can't. Because all of us are capable of drawing conclusions if you go back through your book of life. And in Scott Evan, we have this wonderful thing called the log book. And you can go back through. And you can you know, say, well, here, I screwed that up and I landed in a tree there. And that's where I almost hit the helicopter. And this other time, I bumped my head on a plane as I went out and just about knocked myself out. I should quit, right? You can make a case, like a lawyer, all of us can, for why you should quit Scott Evan. You, you could make a case for why you should quit school, can't you? If you added up all of your failures, you could nurture a feeling of, no, I can't. But where does that get you? <laughs> okay. So likewise, we're equally capable of visualizing the opposite possibility, right? When we're in fear, it's because we're visualizing what we don't want. And it feels so bad because we're not even thinking like ourselves. We're not just <laughs> not being ourselves, right? We're visualizing a negative possibility. 
negative to us. But we're equally capable of changing our reality in the other direction.